Imagine America back in 1607, filled with prosperity, hope, but above all else, a sense of achievement. Now, a running problem at this time was that America didn't really have any rules and regulations set in place that would guide it to um, a better future. That's why I had to adopt some rules from uh, European countries. One of the rules just so happened to be capital punishment. And the first victim of capital punishment turned out to be a man named George Kendall, a councilman for New Virginia. Today I'm here to talk to you about Proposition 62, a proposition that uh, plans to completely abolish capital punishment without managing to abolish punishment for the criminal. The, the idea of Proposition 62 is that the criminal would spend his entire life in prison and be forced to work and be forced to uh, work off work off every single day of his life and pay six, up to 60% of his wages to the victims of the families he's injured. Now, I, why should you listen to me is because I've been studying this far before I was even uh, in this class. I always studied the death penalty. I, always, I love studying the death penalty. It's actually uh, tell something I take great pride in. And I believe I could best inform all of you about the death penalty so you could go in and hopefully vote whether it's a yes or a no, is by first discussing the economic impacts of Proposition 62, then finally moving on and discussing how Proposition 62 is faring right now in the current time, and finally analyzing Proposition 62 from a more macroscopic perspective rather than a microscopic perspective. So looking at the economic perspective of Proposition 62, you have to first acknowledge that that death penalty is costing taxpayers way more money than um, way more money than it is for sending people a lifetime in prison. This is due to the fact that the trials take so long to process, and because of all the trials that are occurring, that, that are processing at the time, we lose approximately $1.85 million, according to Jasmine Mulula of the LA Times. This, she also states that out of the 400 and, um, out of the 730 people who are in process right now, only 18 of which are receiving appeals at the moment, meaning that the rest are slowly creeping towards uh, receiving an appeal, most of which actually died before even receiving an appeal. Proposition 62 isn't just losing money through the appeals process, but it's also losing money because of, uh, because in California it's legal for gas chambers to, it's legal for people to die uh, via gas chamber, and this is costing the taxpayer uh, a detrimental amount of money as well, especially since Amount of money as well, as said by uh, Chris Cooper of the Times of San Diego, where he quoted that, where he quoted that gas chamber, where he quoted that gas chambers are still being used to bleed out the taxpayers' money, and it's essentially useless since one hasn't been used since 1993, which what, and it can't be used unless consensually, unless the prisoner is given consent to be killed via uh, gas chamber. And besides the whole idea of how the death penalty is failing, I want to discuss Proposition 62 now. So that, going on to my second point, I'd like to analyze how Proposition 62 is faring right now. According to Greg Orton of the Daily News, Proposition 62 at the moment is, has raised $5.9 million. And, and that's a very good start. However, there's another opposing proposition on the ballot known as Proposition 66. Proposition 66 promises the, to actually limit the appeals process to a five-year time limit by, and by increasing the variety of attorneys, that, attorneys available to the, the guilty party, or party in question. This Proposition 62, this is the complete opposite of Proposition 62, which, would, which creates the, so meaning that whichever one receives more votes on the ballot come November 8th, that one would go. That one is the one that would pass, and that that is the one that would pass, and the other one would not. At the moment, Proposition 62 has received 5.8 million, and Proposition 66 has received 5.1 million. So, at, it seems like Proposition 62 will pass, but nothing is certain. And that's bringing me to my third point, and I like to analyze how Proposition 62 can, how Proposition 62 is seen from a macroscopic viewpoint. In order to do this, I have to analyze two different countries with not only large economies, but large populations as well. The only two, uh, the only two countries that I could see fitting the bill would be China and Russia, and I have to analyze how their death penalty, proce death, death penalty process fares to America. First, analyzing China, I'd like to state the Chinese death penalty, the Chinese actually in, have detrimentally more uh, people murdered via, capital, via death penalty than any other nation. In 2014, the Duhai approximated that 2,400 people had died due to died due to the capital punishment process. 
And this, this may seem like a large number, but relatively this is very small compared to uh, how, the number of executions that happened in the past decade. According to, according to the Washington Post, Marine Ray has said that in 2007 alone, 4,000 people have been executed. This is mainly due to the fact that to create a sense of fear so that less crimes get perpetrated in China. This relates back, this relates back to uh, America since uh, the argument for the death penalty is that it will create a sense of fear, uh, promptly lowering the crime rate. However, as we can see in China, this could easily be abused to the point where government officials get free passes, uh, whereas the regular citizens who have to struggle have to struggle a lot more to get their appeals process made, similar to China. Now, going to Russia, I'd like to say that I'd like to analyze how Russia's death penalty is occurring right now, and actually they have suspended their death penalty uh, for, for what it seems like at the past decade at least. Now, it's not to say that, and now Putin has Putin has actually said the command. Um, he does not wish to bring back the death penalty because he sees it foolish and a unnecessary waste of resources. So it's really up to us to see which one, uh, fit, which proposition, which idea fits us better. The model of the Chinese, where death penalty gets uh, far, much farther pushed than anything else, or Russia, where the death penalty is suspended indefinitely. Similar to Proposition 66 and 62. Now, in analyzing the two propositions, I first started off with discussing how the, ec the economic benefits and um, the economic situation of Proposition 62 is, then moving on to finally how the current times of Proposition 62, and finally ending with looking at Proposition 62 from a macroscopic viewpoint. And I, I've been starting this for a while, so I'm glad you all got to listen to me. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you guys managed to vote November 8th. And about, jo about George Kendall, he's the man who, the first man to ever be executed uh, via capital punishment. He was executed for being a Spanish spy set by the local blacksmith. Whether or not you think that holds credibility is up to you, but I just hope you vote on November 8th. Thank you.